Hello, I'm John Voigt. I want to share with you the story of my friend Donald Trump. As you know, he's running for president of the United States. And as you know, when he gets elected, he will make our country great again. The story begins in New York in the early 70s. The city was on the verge of bankruptcy. But Donald looked across the river and saw not a troubled city, but a city that symbolized America's greatness. And he was committed to making it great again. Donald was born in Queens to Fred and Mary Ann Trump. His father was a builder and was the greatest influence in young Donald's life. He learned about leadership early at the New York Military Academy. He became captain of the baseball team and captain of the cadets. He learned the building business at his father's side while working on his degree at the Wharton School of Finance. After college, Donald faced a decision. Join his father in Queens or dream big and make it in the greatest city in the world. The decision was easy. Donald's first notable project was less about renovating a building than helping the city rediscover its soul. The once great Commodore Hotel languished in a rundown neighborhood next to Grand Central Station. The hotel was sold to the one developer who showed that he had the kind of drive, backing, and imagination that would be necessary. They chose Donald Trump. Donald convinced the banks that they had a moral obligation to invest in New York and negotiated a tax abatement with the city, jump-starting a project and creating new construction and hotel jobs. Donald's striking new building revitalized the neighborhood. He single-handedly changed the Grand Central, the Midtown area, uh, by himself by doing that project. Before long, more Trump buildings helped change the skyline of New York. Building in New York was not easy. But Donald was never more frustrated than watching the city waste six years and 13 million dollars trying to rebuild Central Park's Wallman Ice Rink. Donald was astounded. It took him only two years to build Trump Tower. So he stepped in and took over the project. He finished in three months and under budget. He took over another city project, tied up in red tape since 1978. Donald transformed a landfill into a championship public golf course and saved the city millions. Donald will tell you his secret for success is a strong team. He just has that knack of finding the right person, the qualified person who will really excel in that position. Like his father before him, he taught his children the business and now they're important members of the Trump team. Mr. Trump and his children, they love what they do and they are incredibly good at it. And I think that breeds the same type of passion for all those that work for him and are around him. From day one, my father trained us really well. Whether it was in a boardroom, whether it was on a job site, we spent time learning the business and he made sure we understood the value of a dollar and what it meant to really work. He'd send me renderings when I was a little girl with handwritten notes on them of buildings that were under construction or in the planning stage and say, I can't wait for you to grow up and help me build these. Now it's fun to stand shoulder to shoulder with my father. Over the years, Donald has created tens of thousands of new jobs, many of them for women. When I was building my building on Park Avenue, and he was building the Trump Tower, he had the first female construction superintendent on the job. When he made me general manager uh, nine years ago, there were only three female general managers of five-star hotels in the whole of North America. After a long career, accomplishing much of what others said couldn't be done, Donald Trump has set his sights on a new rebuilding project. I am officially running for president of the United States. We are going to make our country great again. Donald has said he admires people who put themselves directly on the line. Today, he's not only putting himself on the line, but under fire. Donald could have continued his successful career and spent more time with his family, but instead, he chose to run for president. See, he doesn't need to do this, but what's been happening over the last eight years 
has been so tragic for the course of our nation, we simply had to do this. For my father to step away from a company that he's deeply committed to in favor of running for elected office was a real sacrifice for him. It's Donald's nature to help others. A lot of times he comes across a story or meets a person that touches him and he'll make sure that that person is taken care of privately for the rest of their lives. Donald Trump has a very big heart. When police officers or firefighters or even sanitation workers, correction officers, I can remember a teacher uh, got injured or died, he would uh, step forward and he would make an anonymous contribution. For Donald, it all begins with our young people. Donald Trump believes that higher education and more job opportunities will enhance the quality of American living. Donald is committed to protecting our families and keeping our cities safe. What I see out of Donald Trump, it starts with a message. It starts with a positive message of respect for the American law enforcement officer. But we need it from our national leaders, and that's where we're not getting it right now. He is the one candidate, the non-politician, who can fix our broken economy and get America working again. Trump is a guy, brand new, comes in, shakes up Washington, changes policies on taxes and regulations and helps businesses, and middle-income wage earners will get a raise for the first time in 15 years. Donald will stand up for America. Donald Trump understands negotiation. There's just no doubt about it. It's one of his great strengths. And we have been taken to the cleaners uh, in world trade. We are losing jobs every year, every day, as a result of bad trade policies and bad trade agreements. While some politicians say our best days are past, Donald believes our best days are yet to come. Ronald Reagan was a cheerleader for America. He would talk about what a great country this is, how important it is to work. That gives incentive to people, and it makes, it makes working hopeful. I think what Donald Trump can do, he can give us hope again. He can give us pride in being an American again. He can make us feel like what we should feel like. We're exceptionally lucky people living in this country. Donald Trump is a leader, not a politician. He will be honest with the American people. He will stop wasteful government spending of our tax dollars. He will cut our taxes and create jobs and will rebuild our broken economy. He will lead this country, not apologize to the world for our success. He will always put America's best interests first, whether it's a trade deal with China or standing up to radical Islamic terrorists. As he has done so many times before, he will stand up for the brave men and women who defend our country and who protect us here at home. He will bring about the change this country so desperately needs and get the job done. It's been a long time since we've had a president like that. Donald Trump, it's time to make America great again.